Can we make this old CMP Garand shoot any better? Stick around and find out. Made in November of 1944, CMP has gauged the muzzle wear at 2 and the throat erosion at 2 plus. When shot for expected accuracy, we used HXP from the 70s. This produced three five shot groups that averaged about 5 inches. Depending on your references, an M1 Garand right out of the factory was expected to shoot a minimum of a 5 inch group and M2 Ball is expected to shoot a minimum of 4 inch group. A couple years later when 150 grain PPU was available the Garand was put to the test again. This time we zeroed and then shot some five shot groups. All right, we just shot three three shot groups to zero it. Uh, this is the uh, 150 grain PPU for the M1 Grand, uh, full metal jacket stuff. We look at the target, we've got uh, group one. So these three here end up being four and a half inches. This was at the uh, base setting, zero. Then I went up two clicks. This is the next group, uh, 3.25. And then the last group, all the way up here, one, two, three. Again, 3.25 and that was two clicks. So I backed it off a click and hopefully I'll be between this group and this group and somewhere in here. So we got it all zeroed. Now let's go ahead and do five shots and see what happens. All right, let's see what happened. When I reviewed it downrange, I didn't even bother shooting a video. It ended up being three and a quarter inches, and I was highly disappointed. So the quest continued to figure out how to get this rifle to shoot right. Doing an inspection of the rifle and looking over some of the comments that were made and suggestions I'd found, the crown kept coming up as a possible culprit. So I went ahead and ordered a recrowning tool from Pacific Tool and Gauge. When it came in a couple months later, I recrowned the barrel. The top and interior looked good, and any chatter marks were removed with brass screws and valve lapping compound. I decided not to take away any more material from the exterior of the barrel, and I left some of the original dents and dings in place. Back at the range now, I decided to fire a six shot group. Why six? I don't know. But that's what we did. And what I want you to do is I want you to take note of the first five being shot. You can see that they're much tighter than any other group we've seen thus far. And they actually measured 1.9 inches. That final round, getting thrown out, turns it into a 3.5 inch group which is very similar to what we've seen in the previous clips. All right, there we go. So on the day that I was shooting this, I had a lot of hope with these next three groups. I had just shot that fantastic group. That's exactly what I was looking for. I thought that when I dropped that right, round, that go. was totally me. Made it, I, I was the one that made it a three and a half inch group. On each target. What you're going to see next dashed all my hopes.
I reviewed these groups and the performance for the day and I ended up deciding that the go. gas cylinder was coming loose. Uh, what we did this time was, um, I'll show it in another video, but you'll see these splines here, splines located here. The uh, gas cylinder slides onto those splines and what I noticed was my gas cylinder was loose. So what I did was I peened the top and one each on the side to press that gas cylinder up into the barrel because I could see poor mating contact on the uh, gas cylinder. And uh, that is all we've done. I haven't done any bedding. I haven't done anything in the stock at all. I haven't wedged anything. I haven't done anything to the trigger group. Uh, this is all still bone stock as I received it from the CMP. Um, so today, hopefully, uh, we'll have time to shoot uh, the PPU. I brought out some uh, Lake City, and I brought out uh, some of the 70s HXP stuff. So um, we'll give this thing the best shot that we can, and uh, let's see how it does. So this shows some promise. Um, it was shooting point aim, point impact. That was shooting right there at the uh, bottom of the, or aiming right at the uh, bottom of the circle. It was hitting bottom of the circle. Um, since tightening the gas cylinder, I actually had to move two clicks left. So the other thing I noticed was uh, ejection pattern. Uh, the Lake City all kind of headed off in the, uh, like two o'clock direction and all of my PPU brass is almost heading off at three o'clock right here so um, before it would literally launch it anywhere um, I was having brass landing all over the place I was having a hard time finding it so hopefully uh, peening those splines there has caused a better mating surface with the gas cylinder in the barrel uh, where the uh, gas port is so uh, we'll see uh, let's let's do a five shot group same target same uh, same aiming point so right there at the six o'clock on that circle There we go. Here are all the PPU shots. We can see that the impact area didn't change at all between the three shot zero and the five shot. Um, one, two, three, four, five from this last group. And we'll go furthest away, the furthest away. That's two and a half. Um, if we throw out the bad guy, what we've got inch and three quarter. And then that first three shot group was inch and three quarter. That is significantly better than the three and a quarter that we were averaging the other day uh, after we did the crown. All right, here we go. We've got uh, five rounds of the HXP Greek surplus 1972 ammo. Same thing I was shooting in the expected accuracy video. Let's see what happens. All right, now we're going to do five shots with the Lake City. And this is from 1968. Let's get that focus on that. Lake City 1968 surplus.
So there we go guys, here's the surplus run. So we've got the HXP 72. Um, we've got a pretty good group of four here and then one flyer. Uh, if we do the flyer, we're sitting at two and three quarter. And then uh, without the flyer, we're sitting at an inch and a quarter, which I'm pretty darn impressed with. Uh, something I noticed was a uh, point of impact. Not a lot of difference between the PPU and the um, HXP. Now where it got interesting was the Lake City. Uh, the Lake City, I'm going to say it did a little worse than it usually did after the gas cylinder and the recrowning. Um, I mean that's, that's a what, five inch group with the flyer and I'll take that off when we're sitting at three and a half which is pretty close to what we did the other day with just the recrown. Um, interesting part is I don't think this was a fluke. I shot Lake City first off today just to get on paper and let's see one two three shot group one two three shot group at three and a half and then one two three four five shot group so is that four and a four and a half without the flyer three and a half so um it looks like it's consistently not happy with this rifle this was a fun project i've owned this rifle for uh i guess like 12 years or so now and um I've gone hunting with it, I've drug it around the mountains, I've shot some crazy soft point ammo out of it, I've taken deer with it. Um, it's a good rifle, but it's always been about a four or five inch rifle for me. What I did to the splines up here to uh, get the gas cylinder to attach, I guess that's a uh, common issue. And uh, I would say start there and... Um, as you guys can see from the uh, images of the crown that were uh, previous in the video, this thing did need uh, some touch up on there. There were some deep, um, deep gouges in the crown and that was probably affecting accuracy. And as we could tell from the last trip out, uh, we did get this down to three inches until it just started throwing stuff all over the place. Um, and I believe that's because it was reassembled uh, I put the gas cylinder back on. It probably stayed tight for a little while and then loosened up. So uh, right now, I know that this gas cylinder has to be knocked off and uh, we're probably good to go. If you get one of these CMP guns, don't be discouraged. Find the ammo that works for you. Maybe do a couple of these modifications and, and uh, see if you've got a shooter. Well, thanks for sticking around, guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.